Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Global Comic Safari. This week, we've got a market report of the first half of 2020. With me, as always, is Define Triple Nine, Matt Roybal. What is up, Define Triple Nine in the house? Welcome, <laughs> sir. Uh, it's been a little bit. I feel like we did a pickup show, and we've been a little off the horse, but we're trying to get back on. And we thought, well, we haven't touched any on any sales data this year, so let's let's yeah. kind of hop in and just see what's going on and uh, what's going on at the market. First, I just want to kind of throw a shout out to a couple of our friends and uh, check them out. And we have a very special announcement this week. Our friends at Parallel Ervin, Parallel Universe in Istanbul, Turkey are out with another fantastic variants. Uh, we've got Hulk 181. They've reprinted the standard edition in Turkish, as well as some Marvel variants, which are limited to 500 each. They include the awesome green and silver sketch cover seen on the bottom, as well as on the top, a redrawn edition of Hulk 181 with Wolverine by Yildri Sinar, who has done some fantastic stuff with some of the Spider-Man books. Yes. Um, and then next to that is the uh, Hulk and Weapon H and Red Hulk. That is done by Osgur Yildrim, who you may have remembered from the Venom um, Carnage AF-15 edition. And then at, below those, there are the Parallel Ervin limited store variants. These are limited to 250 each. You've uh, got a tiny. wick. Oh God. You can't get that small in the U S the limited here is like 3000. So <laughs> 250 is minuscule. Uh, I am a huge fan of the redraw with um, X 23 in it. I just think yeah. you know, I really like his style. We've talked about how, um, you know, he kind of does his people real kind of tight and muscular and yeah. the coloring on it just pops. Um, and then the other one is the the Hulks or the Hulk Veens. It's featuring the, the uh, Weapon H, Red Hulk, and Maestro, who is going to have his own book released very soon. So who knows if that one will heat up because we all remember the Spider-Gwen Miles that is now going for crazy money, which we'll talk about a little later today. Yeah. So these guys are Turkish artists doing variants for a Turkish store, redrawing some very classic covers. So... If you're a Hulk 181 fan, these are must-haves for you. Yes. So thank you, guys. Keep up the awesome work. Oh, yeah. They're, they're doing amazing work over there. That, that store is awesome. Yes, and awesome. he is a very cool dude. We've talked to him quite a bit. So support yep. him. Check him out on eBay at uh, Parallel Irvin Istanbul. And uh, get these ordered, man. Get some, get yeah. some copies. They ain't going to last long. No, Promise they will not. All right. So I thought we'd kind of start out with kind of more of the uh, the classic stuff, some bronze and silver age uh, type editions. So starting with one of the big boys that we saw is uh, the lots of images here tonight. Lots of images. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't done a we haven't done a market report in a while. So this is a big dog. Yeah, it's a big dog. The La Prenza Ombres X number one. Yeah, that's a that's a grail. Yeah, I yeah. I, I would chase this guy because this is what kind of grade did we think this was? It was a a lower grade. It's lower. I, I you know I was talking with Scott about it and we were thinking maybe it's like a two five, maybe a three. Yeah, maybe quick, maybe, quick maybe yeah maybe maybe if you got lucky you could go a little higher. You know, it's got writing on the cover. Um, I think it's got some. A little some issues with the corners, maybe some damage on the back. I can't quite fully remember. It presents uh, well, though. But it presents very well. And I think, you know, I think that for a lot of the Silver Age Mexican keys, even in lower grade, you're not going to find them under a grant. You're just, you know, not, depending, not. 
not much. Not really. I mean, you might find some, um, some of the later. Yeah, the later Marvel, but not Marvel. Yeah, that's gonna be oh, tough. That that's a yeah. it's a twelve hundred dollar sale, which I mean, it's a little cheaper than its American counterpart, but not by much. Yeah, the, we're seeing we're seeing some of these foreigns. Like you know, you have your American here. We're seeing some of these foreigns in the same grade just slowly start to, you know, eke up in there. And I don't know, man. I, I think that's a solid sale for a, for a nice, presentable lower grade copy. You know, you're gonna need. Over ten one hundred dollar bills for it. That's that's decent, man. It's very, very true. Lots of hundred dollar bills. Um, <laughs> we kind of mentioned another late Marvel one, and sticking with La Prenza, mm -hmm. uh, we had two sales of yeah. Daredevil number one. Yep. So one mm -hmm. was a graded five point oh, and one was an ungraded. That look, let's call it similar condition. Yeah, they're about both of these in the mid three hundreds. This one is honestly, you know, we were talking some of them edging up like the X-Men was. Yeah. This one's still pretty low. Yeah. This is this is a good little entry-level Silver Age key Mexican Lorenzo. You're not going to have to pay too much for it, but you're unless you get an absolute rag, you're going to have to drop some money for it. And, um, you know, one of the things I like to see within the foreign back issue market is stability, right? You know, there are those kind of high outliers. But I think what we're seeing with the Laprenza stuff, at least, is they're really holding their value. And in many instances, you know, like I said, just kind of working their way up slowly but surely. We're seeing more, excuse me, been drinking and eating. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Speaking of Mexican, look at that, Dos Equis. But um, yeah, you know, we're, we're seeing them hold their value. And as, as new blood comes into the hobby, they're looking for those keys that aren't outrageous because they don't want to spend a whole lot of money, but that they want to just kind of get their beak wet. You know what I mean? Well, and the, the La Prenza, the Mexican, is kind of becoming like that first true kind of foreign people are kind of discovering. Yeah. And, you know, that yeah. people know the, the the Pence variants and some of that stuff. Um, you know, the, the more modern people do the Canadian variants. And there's the Canadian whites, which is a whole other yeah. thing we're not going to even touch on. Yeah. But I mean, whites. It, it does seem to be the the, uh, the Mexicans are kind of that next thing before they really start branching into the crazy world. So it's a nice thing to get in. I do think this is a little cheaper because the coloring is so much different. Yeah, yeah, the coloring is very different. And I know that some people love it and some people hate it. This is my theory on that, though. My theory on why the Leprenzas are kind of getting found maybe a little more than some of the other foreign editions is simply because a lot of the a lot of the Mexican sellers have found American eBay. You know, in Mexico you have Mercado Libre, right? And for us, for American sellers or people outside of the Mercado Libre system, it's hard to crack it. It's hard to get in there. So oh, yeah. so what what's happening, I think, is a lot of the the Mexican foreign or the Mexican sellers are realizing that there is a market for some of these books outside of their country, and they're putting it on international eBay. So it's not just Americans. Anyone can search for these books. It doesn't matter if you're in Sweden, uh, Philippines, South Africa. It doesn't matter. Australia. If you just type in, you know, uh, Mexican, and you you have an idea of what the titles are, you can find these books. And I think that maybe has something to do with it. Is you know, a Mexican seller can put his book for sale uh, on Mercado or in a, uh, you know, like a Facebook Mexican comic group, or he could put it on the broader international market and see if he can realize more money. So yeah. I think that that maybe has something to do with it. Absolutely. So one more Daredevil, number one, as we're kind of sitting here talking about it. The Danish. Danish edition. It's a little more <laughs> traditional looking with the white cover. Um, apparently has issues one and two in it, which we do see a lot in the... Uh, the kind of the uh, Nordic countries in that yeah. region. Um, yep. This one is significantly cheaper, uh, 152 for a six five, but we would expect condition to be a little higher there. Um, mm -hmm. So, I, still a nice, nice book to find. I think. I think sorta. I think that was a steal. Honestly, if I had seen that book, I would have bought it at that price. I, mean, I don't disagree with that. I probably would have purchased if I had been paying attention to it. So we did. We do have a lot of different people contributing to the kind of some of these books with us. Uh, Robert Fordham, uh, Scott McManus, uh, 
Josh has been helping us. So lots of lots of help on this, and we appreciate it. So thank you guys for helping us kind of dig through. We all have our kind of things we watch for. And as we said, we didn't even see these because I probably would have bought them. <laughs> I might have bought that too. I, honestly, I think that Danish sale was a steal. Yeah, I think it was a steal. Already graded. I mean, somebody probably lost some money on that. Already slabbed. Everything was ready to go. It was it presents beautifully. Um, and, you know, the Nordic countries, I, I think Denmark's, some of Denmark's stuff's a little harder to find. Um, yeah, I, 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 someone got a really good deal on that one. I think that book should have been a little higher, actually, but I don't know. Um, so one more, well, another Marvel key is uh, Fantastic 448. That's nice. Also La Prenza. Mm -hmm. um, a decent copy. I mean, it's definitely got some wear. I mean, probably yeah. in, the, in the in the very good range, I'd say. Uh, but it presents really nice. Two fifty, basically two hundred fifty bucks. Get in That's shipping. Not bad. That's another really good solid price. I actually think that was a little bit of a steal too. And the reason being is some of the older Laprenza stuff's hard to find, and that presents well. You know, I at one time I owned two of those copies, and. Um, they were both really rough. It's hard to find some of those earlier FFs. Those La Prenza FF earlier ones are hard to find in decent condition or simply hard to find ones that are lower grade but present well, don't have writing, don't have tears. That was a good solid price, I think, and uh, whoever bought that it should be very happy. Yeah, and that's a pretty, pretty book, and it looks real close to the American again. I mean, that's a big deal, I think. Yep, and the La Prenzas were printed I usually think within a year. Within a year of the American, and you don't see that so often with a lot of the Silver Age Marvel stuff. Um, you know, Mexico was right on it. You know, it was like America, boom, Mexico right after, it. and then some of the other countries fell like dominoes. But yeah, yeah, if you're if you're trying to get as close to that American print date, you got to go with the Mexican books for the most part. Yeah. So sticking with the X Men, I was going to stick with Silver Age. We're going to jump over to another X Men book though. Um, oh, that's pretty. Special Strange 24, the giant size X-Men French edition. Now printed a bit later in 1981. It's mm -hmm. a real nice copy at a 7.5, just under oh, 250 bucks. It's real nice. And you know what? I think this is kind of a, a, a really kind of, I don't know if it's an outlier sale, but, you know, you can usually pick these up on French eBay for between like, 15 euros and 50 euros, depending on condition, even cheaper sometimes. But again, with some of the earlier French stuff, it can be hard to find a decent condition. Why does that look different? Uh, let's do a little teaching here. Well, I think this one actually was in the U.S. too, so that makes a big deal. More eyes on it. Yep, also more eyes titled, on it. titled with the U.S. listing. So if, if you're going to find it, you're going to get a little better deal hunting French eBay under the French title. But when somebody puts giant size X Men 1 in the title on American eBay, they get eyes. It gets eyes, and that also, you know, kind of speaks to. There are a lot of foreign sellers. This is interesting. They put stuff on the broader international eBay market, but they don't list it right. They don't list it. If you list it right with with the uh, corresponding American issue, you can usually get more eyes and you can get more money. Now that special strange twenty four. I want to talk a little bit about that because some of our viewers might be like, "Well, why did it look so different?" Put it up on the screen for a second. Okay, so. Basically, the French giant size X Men. It looks different because it was redrawn by a guy named Jean Friasno. He was a he was a French cover artist. And he he mainly worked in gouache and oil, but he died in 1987. He's not producing more work. I don't I you know I'm not exactly sure what he died of, but he did a bunch of the French painted covers in France. They love the guy. You know he's kind of a legendary artist in France. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, on the uh, there's some original art market stuff that he has out there uh, that gets a lot of attention. Of course, not here in America. But I, I think that the re the French redraws by Lug are very interesting foreign editions. And this is a great price for this book. Yeah. And probably means more people are looking because all of a sudden it was on their search. And they're like, well, now I need that. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> said, now I need that. And look, 37 bids, that's that's really good. It's a lot of bids. So this next one is one that I'm still beating myself up about. This is <laughs> what I've talked to you about. And, yep. uh, oh. 
Oh, oh man. Which is Australian edition of Showcase 22, traditional cover there, 116 page book. It's thick. It's a monster. I saw this and I talked to you about it. it we determined it was, it was printed within one year of the original. Very close, yep. Yeah. And nobody really has seen many come up. Uh, some, no. some, some gentleman in the group from Australia said he's seen three, this being the third. And this was the highest sale of those that he'd seen. It's a decent looking copy, not great, but presentable. And this yep. one got posted in the in the uh, in the FCC group and talked about a lot because I, yeah. I was the second bidder and I actually meant to bid more, but I got confused on my Australian dollars and US. Oh dollars. shit! And then I also got a little wonky because the it was listed in Australia and wasn't listed to ship to the US, and I kind of just I got a little freaked out. It was like a seven yeah. a.m. in time, you know. Sometimes you're groggy. Uh, and I still am regretting getting that one because that's a Silver Age key of a DC mm -hmm. book in a a title that I don't really hear too much about. Well, those damn all favorites were older Aussie books, and um, I just you know I just don't see a lot of them. And you know I'm gonna tell this: you're a foreign hunter out there, and you don't have uh, eBay alerts on Australian eBay. You're just fucking up. You're not doing it right. You need to go to Australian eBay. You need to figure out what Australian keys you want, and you need to set those alerts because they, even in Australia, they don't come up all the time. And there's some amazing Australian editions out there. You got the Horowitz stuff. These all these all favorites, and you can always tell this uh, this publisher's work because they would put a little strip on there. Uh, see that little black strip on the spine? It yeah, says uh, what does it say? Like 64 pages or something? And it just repeats. It's kind of a weird graphical thing, but there's definitely some DC keys in, in that publisher's run over there, and um, they're beautiful books. And you know what I think in, in a weird way? I think that – I think because they're still in English – okay, so the Australian editions are still in English. I think that English buyers feel a little more comfortable knowing that they can read it. And so if you're kind of – speculating on what you think is going to be uh uh you know get a little more attention at least here in america from an english language perspective some of the english editions maybe can get more because as an as an american buyer or an english speaker you feel a little more comfortable knowing you can read it right so i, I don't know man i that was a strong book I, yeah I told you I was going to bid five, and I didn't. I don't know even five would have got it, but do we know who got it? No, nobody admitted it. So probably an Australian collector. He might have, yeah, because there, there's some hardcores that do try to find that stuff. Um, yeah, that's. I think that 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 sale was impressive. So another one I missed out on. This one, as you see, says delivered. So one of our friends bought it. Oh, he it up. yeah. The. Uh, <laughs> good the, old Josh. Uh, good old Josh. The Action Comics first Supergirl 252. It probably got less views because it wasn't listed that way. Yeah, didn't list it right. There you go. I, I happened to be just searching Lebanese one day and saw it. Um, it does have a restored label right now, but because it came out of a binding, we believe. So there's some mm -hmm. glue on the spine. A 2.5 condition, but man, it looks good. It looks real good. Yeah, it presents when, really well. When you compare, it's fairly old at 1964. I mean, it's not it's not new. Um, and just those Lebanese books look so cool. Yeah, they do. That's one tenth of the price you can get the U.S. edition. That was a steal. I think the yellow, the purple label scared a few buyers away. Probably did. I wish and it's it, wrong. It's wrong, by the way. It's yes. not restored because it was pulled from a bind. If you were to send that to CBCS. They should give it. I mean, it's still going to get docked, but yeah. it shouldn't have. It shouldn't be restored. Someone didn't try to glue that. CGC doesn't know because no. they just don't know. That was pulled from a bind, and um, yeah, that's that. That book does not deserve a purple label, John. I was I was winning that book when I went to bed, and when I woke up, I was not. Josh stole it from you, bro. I'll, I'll be okay. I'll let him have it. But man, it that you those two, Josh. those two are the ones I've missed and I'm pissed off about still. So, um, yeah, that was, was a cool book. 
one more kind of Bronze Age book while we're in this family. This is the elusive Vampire One, the Ghost Rider Werewolf by Night combo. It's got the Marvel Spotlight 5 on the backside and the Werewolf by Night 1 on the front. Uh, this book sold for $225 for probably a book in the very good range from what I could tell. Yeah. Uh, this one, I think, kind of got a little bit of a comic to hum kick because he had just done a video on it and then it oh, sold yeah. out that day. Oh, and this is this one isn't the spotlight. This is the Ghost Rider one. Oh, you're right. You're but right. but either way, Comic Tom on a recent video, he did of, the Marvel Spotlight. This is the one. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Um, but he talked about the whole double key phenomenon. Yes. About this particular run within the this Danish publisher's run, and they're fascinating because they're flip sided books. There's two separate Marvel covers on either side, but this this book. For a while, was not that expensive. I think this is this could be an outlier. Maybe am I, I think, saying the value is not there? I'm not saying that. But I think the American market will catch on, and this one will be on fire real soon. It kind of is, and I think more people are watching for the run, especially yeah. these first two issues. Um, and then we've talked about it. If you look at the pickup shows, the last two issues, the Ghost Rider side <laughs> is real racy. Yeah, uh, it's crazy. Marvel. Uh, let's just say the Marvel execs would turn in their grave if these kind of pop up and got popular. So oh, I'm yeah. not going to show them here. Go ahead and check out the last episode of the uh, Global Comic Safari pickups, and I show off the number 16, which will you know melt your eyes. So yeah, uh, you're right. Body parts, body Ooh. parts, crazy. But, I mean, who can deny that Comic Tom has a huge viewership, and you know he's been getting into forums lately. Um, you know, he's watched our show and seen some of the double key stuff that we've done. And he's, he's, you know, he's got a real, uh, kind of rager for, for double keys right now. And he's showing them off and people, people like it. They, they, they really think it's cool. And, um, you know, where else in the comic book world can you see these kind of double keys that you, these books that you didn't know were going to get put together. It's, it, I mean, it makes sense. The, the, the inherent novelty value is there. Let's oh, just yeah. see if the money can rise up and, and match it. But uh, beautiful book. Whoever bought it, I mean, yeah, you know, it's maybe nice is it. You could probably find it cheaper in you its probably native could. land, but it's the only one on eBay at the time. So sometimes yeah. you just take it and you go. Yeah, um, spend an extra hundred bucks. Why not? What is it? What's an extra hundred bucks? Time? Time is worth, you know, it could take you, it could take you. <laughs> A year to find a Danish contact to find that book for you. Hundred bucks is nothing. The only negative with those books is everybody I know that sees them says, mm -hmm. "Now I need two because I want to oh, put them." Yeah, because you want to put it together. together. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a bummer. Well, I guess you could you could display it one way and then and then switch it. I I don't know. I like I said I I have a couple because I've was a fan of that book for a while and I I plan on displaying two of them eventually because why not? It's awesome. Well, and speaking of that, John, I'm still seeing blank wall space behind you, brother. I keep spending money on books instead of uh, frames. <laughs> so. A bit of a failure here. No, I uh, understand that totally. I'd rather the, spend money on books. One of the reasons is these books that you know we've talked about before that we know I have a little bit of a problem buying. The freaking non-cannons. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so this is just kind of a, a, a straight up auction. Um, one of the not really exceptionally cool covers. I mean, it's got a, mm -hmm. it's got a cave girl on it. It's got a, you know, it's a decent cover. It's a decent condition book, but 217 bucks. It's solid. Uh, that's a real solid sale. That used to mm -hmm. be about a hundred bucks when we talked about it at the last episode of this, which was beginning of the year. So yep. it is drifting a little higher. Um, another one that was a bit shocking is this one. I, yeah. This, uh, you know, completely in, in, uninteresting one other than it's just non-canon. Yeah. It's not that exciting. Still sold for 136. And these I again. Think, I think because it was a decent, it was a decent condition copy. I agree. I, but I mean, it, it definitely is climbing because you, a couple ended last year in the sub hundred range. Yeah. Now, as we get to the more interesting covers, the price seems to go up. Yes. Um, I, I could have highlighted probably a hundred of these sales. I'm just going to pick one. 
Um, okay. This one to me is one that honestly yeah. surprised the heck out of me. That's huge. I don't think I have this one actually. Really? No, I, I don't think so. I, I, I'm missing still about a quarter of the run, and this is one I don't think has popped up. It does have the the Gwen in you know some some uh, '70s kind of yeah romper type thing. So I I oh, kind of see why it, I I'm surprised 850. Like it has moved from like oh that's a cool book to one of the top couple right now because of that yeah. sale. Well, if, you know this is what I think on the non cannons. If it's got the if it's got the hotly if it's got the hot good girl chick on the cover, those are the ones people are chasing, right? Oh yeah. You know it's. But what I think is interesting is like that that prior book that you showed. Even the books that are really not as interesting, they're 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 eclipsing that hundred dollar ceiling now. Oh, and very these, very these, easily. Yeah, and these ones that have the the really hot good girl art on them, they are they're they're on fire. I mean, if you can find if you can find one with a with a chick on it, a good looking girl on it. It's a good. I say it's a good investment for the future. The Gwens it's go everywhere. for more. Yes, the Gwens the do go Gwen for more. Even more. So that's kind of like yep. there's the top tier books. There's anything with Gwen on it. Mm -hmm. then the you know good girl images, and then it's kind of the rest of that stuff floats depending on condition. Mm -hmm. And and kind of the interestingness of the cover too. Like you know some of the robot covers we talked about are really kind of interesting. Well, there's um, a I didn't include it, but the robot with the aliens cover. Mm -hmm. Uh, that has sale close to 500. Yeah, so you know it, it really depends on the cover art, and you know, but if you're if you're looking for the fire, you've got to find the ones that have Gwen on the cover, or at least a, a a good girl art type image. And if you can find that, and you can find it at a reasonable price, you're winning. This I mean, one, these... I, like I said, this one still blows my mind because I have so many of them in this section in the 260 or the 160. Mm -hmm. I've mm -hmm. never been offered this one. I don't have one, and I've got three or four of most of the other ones in that range where I've had them. If I if I don't, it's because I've sold my fourth copies of some of these. I I have a feeling maybe this one was popular in Mexico before and just doesn't pop maybe. up quite as much. I don't think it's anything to do with rarity. It just may be staying in collection. Yeah, yeah, if they're holding on to it. I'm kind of surprised you didn't bid on that. Did that just pass pass you by? I I don't think I thought it was a realistic price. Mm. Apparently, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, or maybe that'll be an outlier. Maybe another one, a lower grade one, will pop out, and you can get it for like four or five. I don't there, know. Are, there, there's a quite a few listed right now, but there's almost nothing under three hundred and fifty dollars, and that's the yeah. kind of common covers. Um, and there's a lot of listings in that eight hundred to, to fifteen hundred range of some of the better covers. So they're out there. I'm not seeing them all get the trigger pulled, but that one did. So that that yeah. does pique my interest. I bet you someone needed it. Maybe just like you were having a hard time finding that. I bet you someone needed it, and so they just went, "I need it." Again, like we talk in foreign, sometimes you 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 factor in wait time and how much is my time worth. And if and trying to build that non-canon run is a bitch. So if someone here in America or out there needed it, they were like, "You know what? Do I think it's overpriced by maybe two or three hundred dollars? Yeah." But am I going to have to wait two or three years? Fuck it. Let's and it might it be triple that then? Yeah, buy it now. All right. So we're going to hit on a couple of older books. I had a couple Golden Age sales and some some randomness that I wanted to hit before we move on to the more modern books. Um, okay. This one, just I didn't realize it had this, but this one must be one that one of our friends bought. Oh, yeah. 1970 non-canon Spider-Man Indonesian book. Oh, man. It's how uh, weird <laughs> Batman plastic man. Uh, I, I truthfully, I can't say I understand the Indonesian stuff. I know Joey came on and did a talk with us a couple episodes ago. So if you're interested in the Indonesian books, go check that out. He talks Definitely. a lot about him. He is becoming one of the uh, foremost experts in the U S on these books. Yep. Totally. Uh, he tried to explain to me what's going on here and I just got lost, but it's real cool to see some of this stuff. Oh um, yeah, and starting to get some, some, some interest and some fee, and you know, just the markets all over. I mean, there's people joining the FCC group 
in droves. I mean, it's, it's, you know, 10, 20 people a week that are all of a sudden there and they're active and they're looking and they're talking. It's not yep. just looky lose. They're like, I want to know what's going on and I want to get in on this. So, yep, exactly. I, this I is think, a really cool. Remind me though, John, was this one of the earliest Spidey appearances in the Indo boots? What was, I, what was it about that it was a key? I, I forget. I, you're asking the wrong guy. We'll have to ask Joey exactly. I, yeah. I believe it's because it had Batman and Spider-Man. In oh, okay. So it was I, like a crossover. Yes. It was a boot crossover. Oh, okay. So, yeah. The, and that something Joey said it was a specific interest was when they cross over brands and characters. Um, yeah. So I, that Indo market is something we'll probably keep an eye on. It's They're just so vast. So vast. Oh, the Indo market's insane. <laughs> Yeah, there could be books written about it, Joey. And, you know, and that's that's kind of the thing with the with some of these other little sub key markets within the foreign uh, edition craze is you got to educate yourself. And apparently, someone that was educated saw that. Were, were there how many bids were there? Was that a bin or a bid? Just a one bid, but it was it was a one bid. I, that somebody, did say delivered. So one of our friends bought it. It appears probably. <laughs> so this is this is one that. Uh, Josh happened to point out to me. I was kind of pissed. I didn't see. It's funny because in the uh, the Tales from Flipside market report a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the American edition of this book, and he shot me this one, which is the uh, nice UK edition, the ghostly weird stories. It's a LB Cole cover with lots of greatness going on. A crazy oh, kind yeah. of uh, Mars attacks looking alien, and just you know the Death Ship. The American book went for close to triple this mm -hmm. so i would have bought this just on the on the price discount on a fantastic coal cover yeah. for a uk edition i mean so who yeah you know for the longest time people poo pooed the pence editions you know what you know what i gotta say to those people fuck you the pence editions are they're gonna be so much harder to find than the american editions simply because the print runs on them we're way smaller um the you know this whole idea that the pence editions are lesser than again i'm gonna say it you're fucking out of your mind they're amazing books and right now you can you can get them at a good value in comparison to the american um and, and especially when you're talking some of these like books that are rare in america to begin with yeah no shit no we're talking shit. golden age we're not even on the you know the, the silver we're not age. even on the silver age pences yeah i mean it's a no-brainer, I think, on those books. I think those books have lots of room to grow. Yeah, the pences are the pences are just growing as more awareness and education comes out. A couple more to show: um, Startling Terror Nine, another coal cover. Uh, pretty good buy-in price for this one. Yeah, so, I, mean, I think if you're looking to get some of these horror covers, the, the UK editions are a, an easy place to kind of go. Um, and get some value. Yeah, I, I definitely. And if you're investing for the future, I think the pences are a great place to do that. One more, not a pence, but uh, the uh, oh god, Santos de Brujas. Don't show me that at that price. Don't don't even yeah. show it to me. Witch's tail. I mean, it pretty solid value at sixty seven dollars. But I think these are slowly rising as you see they some of these go. I mean, they probably were a bit cheaper before. I won't quote on it. I didn't really study them much, but I think there's some nice value to be had in these. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, I you know, I think I had mentioned in our last pickup show, I had kind of stayed away from the older silver and, and golden age uh, foreign editions just because I was building specific sets. But I've been kind of moving more in that direction as, as I like, you know what, I've got to change stuff up. And I've been I've been trying to pull some of these Mexican Golden and Silver Age books, especially the horror stuff, because the horror stuff, they just got classic covers, man. And when you can get them at that price, it's yeah, a no-brainer. And a lot of these horror books are famous for the covers, not the inside. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's a double no-brainer. Yeah, no brainer. At seventy bucks, I would have bought that like that. That was a good yeah, price. I agree. That's a, it's a solid book. Nice looking book. Um, so, 
one more, not not horror, but just just an odd sale. Um, Australian Batman, Golden Age Batman, Batman 55, 1954. Oh, man. Uh, 140 bucks. I know a friend of mine, uh, Sean, Big Leg, as some of you may know him from the channel, had stumbled upon a couple of these a few years ago for pennies on the dollar. And I think Dude. he's very happy he got them. Um, you know, it just another interesting kind of place to get some value for some of these older books. Hell yeah. And, and these this are hard to find. These Some of these older yeah. Golden Age Australians. Oh, yeah. They do not come up very often. They I are think hard to find. That's a good sale price for the seller, but I don't think it's a bad price for the buyer either. No, not at all. I think it's another kind of value range thing. Some of these older yeah. Golden Age books we've been talking about. Um, you know, and also if you're a Golden Age collector, you're already used to heartbreak and hunting and searching. These are going to give you brand new things to have heartache and search for. <laughs> Hell yeah. You know? Yeah. Come yeah. on in and right. find some more books to break your heart for a while. And, you know, the thing about those those older Australian DCs, too, is is I think most of them were printed on some pretty – I mean, the print quality, and as far as the paper, is not very hot. A lot of them that I see are really rough. Yeah. Really rough. Whereas we're um, talking about the, the Mexicans, La Prenza's being beautiful books. Those are not quite as much. Yeah, but the, the quality of them just – it didn't seem like they put as much money into the print process. So if you can find – I've got a few – and they're rough as hell and brittle as hell. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. That, that was a good price on that book. Very good price. All right. So now we're going to move on to a handful of modern sales because, well, we got to talk about the whole market, right? Yep. Why not talk about my favorite book? <laughs> good old 300 Italian. You've got a problem, John. I, You I know what? I'm under 10 again. Sir. Oh, you are. Oh, okay. I've, okay. I've let some go in some trades, and you know I'm I don't sell them right now, but I'm trading them just, just, just to help some others who are in need. But I mean, well, I was buying them at end of last year, probably forty to sixty bucks mm -hmm. commonly. Uh, maybe I paid eighty for a nice copy. Uh, these are three sales in the last just over a month, all over a hundred. And these yep. were mostly good copies. I mean, they're not beaters. They're not, um, you know, they're not nine, nine anything's, but they're in that high seven to eight type range. They've got a couple spine ticks and a little damage, but nice copies. So that book is continuing to grow. I think it's continuing just continuing to grow. It's just the aura of that book. Now, Dude, John, five years ago, you could get this book, a decent copy for like 20 euros. Oh, yeah. I bought quite a few at 20, 40 bucks. Yeah, 20, 40 bucks. Dude, dude, there was a time when if you paid 60 bucks for like a really nice one, it was high out of Italy. I've told this story before. The Italians are freaking out about it. They don't understand it. You know, Americans now are going over there and picking up that 300 like crazy. And, you know, for the Italians who are not key obsessive, they're run obsessive. It really freaked them out, and it's still freaking them out because they, you know, I I tell this story every time. I'm going to tell it again just in case we've got uh, watchers that have never heard it. I had my Italian contact come to me and go, "Hey, Matt, please go into the Italian forum and tell these guys what the hell is going on. They think that the dealers are trying to rip them off." And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Because, you know, because the Italians aren't so key obsessive." You know, they're more run obsessive. You know, the book before that and the book behind that is going to be like 12, between 12 and 15 euros maybe for a decent copy. Then they get to the 300 and they're like, what the hell's going on? They, they thought there was some kind of conspiracy going on. It's because American money is going in there and it's picking those books and it's snatching them up. And when it, whenever that money goes in there, the dealers that deal that or wise collectors, wise Italian collectors are then going, holy shit. This book is is realistically selling, you know, it just keeps going up and up and up and up. I wouldn't be surprised if you have Italian collectors right now searching that book out, going to, you know, to flea markets, going to bookshops, going to other, you know, other uh, comic book stores or collectors that they know that, that sell and just snatching up as many 300s as they can, putting them on Italian eBay, 
not for the Italian back issue market, but no. for the broader international back issue market. I've bought and four copies. I bought four copies from the same seller that finds one and puts it up. Finds one, puts there them up. Go. Finds one, there puts it go. up. And then there he asks, go. what else do I want? Because then he's going to go find those and put them up. So you're seeing that that outsider money go in there and affect that Italian back issue market. And is that good or bad? You know, time will tell. Bad but for the Italians. It's bad for the Italians that are trying to build their runs or trying to upgrade their copies. And so, you know, that's an interesting topic that uh, I'd like to address at some point in time in the future about how outside money, and it doesn't even have to be American. It can be just the broader international back issue market, how it comes in and it affects the local indigenous markets. And, you know, it changes things. It, it, it adjusts things and dealers adapt and collectors adapt. Are there, is there, are we going to see any pushback by, you know, we've already seen pushback in some countries where people going, well, these, you know, these people are coming in and buying our stuff and it's leaving the country. We're already seeing some pushback in some areas of the world. So yeah. it's, it's an entry. It'll be an interesting conversation, but, you know, my my advice to any collector that wants an Italian 300, buy one now because the prices are only going to go this way. The only ones that are getting sold that I don't buy is because I'm sending them <laughs> to the NL. They need yeah. one. Or John's going to buy it and you're going to have to just trade with him or buy it from him later. Exactly. So as we talked, there were a couple crazy sales on this book. This was one and there was another one. Both listed kind of similarly as extremely high grade. 9.8 Italian edition. I have seen this one up for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's been a years, but it's been up a long time. I didn't personally feel it was a 9.8. I think it's that, a high grade. That uh, lower right corner looks soft. Yeah, I, I felt it was probably going to get you a 9.4, 9.6. You think now, that would get a 9.6 with that little corner? With that corner? Yeah. The lower right corner? It's been a while since I looked in detail. I didn't feel like it was worth my... I don't think it was a 9.6. Let's be honest. I don't. And I don't even know if mm -hmm. I thought it was a 9.4. When I, when I am honest to myself, because mm -hmm. if I thought it was a 9.4, at one point that was the top in the census, and I probably would have paid that price. Uh -huh. I think there's some color rub. Now, who knows? That book's a little inconsistently graded. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know it's not a 9.8. I'm pretty sure it's not a 9.6. Maybe on a good day it gets a 9.4. You know, you know, you know what the bane of this book's nine eight existence is, John. We've talked about it before. It's thick and it's cardstock. It's and the it's scuffing. Black. It's the black and it's the scuffing. Remember, the Italians didn't have a bag and board culture. A lot of these Copper Age Lomo Ragnos got stacked, and as those stacks get moved around, as the books get moved around, that black shows scuffing like crazy. And so when you get that scuffing on those on those covers, you get, you know, rubbing, you get a little scuffing. I think that scuffing keeps it out of the 9.8 range. I personally, I think we're going to see a 9.6 soon. I think within the next year, we're going to see a 9.6 pop out. I don't know. I don't know where. I've seen a few guys had copies. I, I, I sold some books to a guy today that showed me his copy that he just sent to CGC. And it's very nice. And I told him, I said, dude, that looks like an, yeah, well, I think it could, you know, you could get lucky there. But the, the, the bane of this book's existence is that scuffing that you can only see when you like angle it in the light. Yeah. And a lot of them have scuffing because they weren't in bags and boards. And, and I just kind of thinking, about, I, I'm thinking about this book because I've stared at it enough. Mm -hmm. I stopped staring at it because the point, the price kind of came out of my range. And I stopped stop looking at it, put it on my search. Mm -hmm. in hindsight, if I've been kind of tracking how the average grades are doing, even if it's a nine, two, nine, four ish, it's probably an okay buy. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. In I my think... mental state, like three years ago, I bought a nine, two for three fifty. Yeah. And yeah. I thought I well, think... that's graded and that's easy. This is a foreign seller. I don't know what I'm going to get. If I had honestly looked at it two months ago, uh -huh. It probably wasn't as bad a deal as I think it was. Dude, a 9.4, I think, is an easy $500 book now because there's only two that we know of. It, and I, I I think that's maybe a little low for the right collector. Now, there's some yeah. people fishing their 9.4s at, at a couple grand. I don't think that's going to happen. Not right now. I don't well, the think, other 9.4, yours isn't being fished. Mine's not being fished, but, you know... 
I mean, just for the fuck of it, do you want me to grab mine real quick? Why not? But if somebody were to somebody were to say, let's say seven fifty, nine hundred bucks, I don't think I would question. It. I would buy it. Two uh, K is still a little out of my range because I'm not sure how many are going to pop up. But Matt's going to show us some prettiness because he's got one. <laughs> I do have one, but you know, I, I seriously, I, I actually have mine stacked up. I'm sending anything I think is near a nine uh -huh. to be graded at this point. You know, the thing down, with that one, the, the thing that I saw, okay, so the right corner on that one is a little rough. This is perfect. Yeah. Even the left corner, watch, bring it up again a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you can't see real well in this photo. But it, you can see a little bit of softness there, right? Yeah. You can't, I don't think you can have too much softness in there. And, you know, you, re, you really got to get these corners nice and sharp. Oh, and it's a thick book, so they tend to have some spine kind of yeah. spine issues at the at the thick side, even so. It's a tough, tough book. It's a tough book to get past that nine two range. I mean, I, even nine two is I, listen. Anything above nine and above is rare. I know almost all the copies that are nine zero and above, and who has them? And they're hard to get. Yeah, and this one, this one actually does have a little bit of softness in there. Yep. And then you know the other thing is on the back. You'll notice on this back spine here too. You'll sometimes notice some a little bit of damage that you'll get as well. And you, um, can't, you can't press them. And you can't press them. Don't try to do it. They're, I mean, you um, can try. You ain't gonna get nowhere. They're hard stock. So you know, and that's the thing with this book. You know, this book right here has the tiniest little nick right in here. It's like the tiniest little nick, but like. It's going to be a tough book to get into that 9.4 and above. I don't know if any will get 9.8. Maybe. If there Eventually were to be a 9.8, it'll, it'll happen probably. Maybe. A 9.8 would easily be a 1000 or $2,000 book. It would be a 2000 book in my head, if, if not more. I mean. I would pay 2000 for it. People pay 2000 for the American, and it's a dime a dozen. Yep. I mean, it's, about that. it's a beautiful book. There's two 9.4s. I, I mean, I, I wish that seller luck. I hope. I'd love, I don't have a problem. I'm not trying to sell mine. It's not going anywhere. I would love to see more 9.4s hit, hit the market. Like I said, that guy that I sold some books with today, his name was uh, uh, Ingenio, I think. Um, uh, I'm going to call him out. Ingenio, I think is his name. Um, he's got a really nice copy, John. And his copy reminds me of my spine where it's just it's – just, Clean. He could get easily a nine two or a nine four if it gets back from CGC. Well, so I'm wishing listen, him luck. Listen to us talking about a foreign book selling in similar prices to the American book. We're not even questioning it. Like I'm not that question four, it. I would pay more than I'd pay for an American nine four right now. Nine yeah. six, I'd do the same. A nine eight, I'd yeah. probably do the same as well, dude. If a nine eight were to come out, it would. I'd be like, wow. You know, and yeah. there's another guy by the name of – at the CGC boards, his name was Anfield Fox. He had my Italian uh, – I, I introduced him to my Italian contact, and he told him. He was a he was a high-grade snob. He said, I want an Italian 300, but I want it in near mint plus. We're talking 9.4 or above. He's out, of, he's out of the UK. That book was sent to him. His name – I think his name is Matthew. He's my Tokayo, which is – he shares the name. Um, and he hasn't sent it in to be graded yet. I'm not sure why, but it's beautiful, John. I'm going to try to get him to send us some scans of it so we can look at it. And um, we can look at it because I think he he could possibly get a 9.6. Hmm. But, but yeah, this book is – it's hot. The Italian 300 is hot right now. Copper yeah. Age, I think it's one of the hottest foreign editions out there. Absolutely. Just talking about its little brother, the French, which is oh, the red one. Yeah. That's a pretty solid sale because in That's my head, this, one, this was always a $20, $30 book. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, and you can get this on French eBay for cheaper than that. I've seen I've seen decent copies go for 15 euros on French eBay. I just don't Maybe. see a lot of the French ones pop up on US, so. I Maybe that's fine. why. Yeah, may, maybe this one went for a little more because someone was just like, I'm, I need it for my set. I haven't seen one in a while, and I want it. And kind of like we talked about, you know, it's the red cover ones maybe aren't so hot, but I kind of like them. 
Oh, I had several people after we did the 300 show say the red one's kind of in their top couple. So really, uh, hmm. I, I, I'm not surprised it's starting to climb. I don't think it's going to hit the heights of the, of the other, some of the others, but it's going to become a nice book because people are going to start building this set. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, it's probably, I would go on a, I'm not even going to go on a limb. I'm going to say it right here. I think the 300 set is probably the most built foreign edition set in the hobby right now. Um, you get, because you know, the beauty of that set is there's a lot of lower hanging fruit ed editions from the Spanish to some of the easier Nordics, you know, and so people are able to kind of, that's going to be my phrase for the day, wet their beak. They're able to get their beak wet on, on that set easier. And so it, it gets them excited. And I mean, and we're talking about the super key of the Copper Age, so it makes sense. All right. So we're going to end on some real modern books. And as I said, we we're going to talk about one of these books before. Um, if we remember our friend at Parallel Irvin with his new 181. Oh, beautiful. Not very long ago, <laughs> he released this book amongst some others. Yes. The Amazing Fantasy 15 edition by Sea Lore. Yep. Limited to 250. He hit fire with this one with the, yeah. you know, Gwen and the Miles. In the mm -hmm. classic recreation and on a beautiful color palette. I mean, uh, both Sealor and Cinar have beautiful color palettes they're mm -hmm. using. I, I, I don't, I shouldn't talk about them the same, but when I look at how they're using some of these colors, it, it is definitely a similar vibe. Not their, not their drawing style, but the color palettes seem to be yeah. there. Um, and this one, several nine eights have sold, um, only signed ones. I haven't seen any blue label nine eights yet. Have sold in the you know five six hundred range. This was a near mint raw four hundred bucks sold. A couple more have been wow. selling in that range, so it's not not the only sale. This book is uh, people are looking at it. I mean, they love Miles, they love Gwen, and this is a tough book because there's no other book out there that there are only two hundred and fifty copies of. And two hundred and fifty copies. That's like and tiny. Quite a few of them are signed without like CGC SS, so that makes American collectors crazy. They don't love yeah. that. Yeah, they don't love that. The COA, but I, I can say that I trust Ilke out of yeah. Turkey. And there's some also some, you know, some that were beat up. I, I remember when I bought a couple for me, when I saw this one kind of first, there were some, he had some listings up for very fine or a couple rougher ones, and they eventually sold for eight, nine bucks. Whoever bought those is happy. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, there are not going to be a lot of nice ones of this one and, uh, congrats to him. He's doing some cool, cool stuff. Friend of the show. I wish him well with the 181. And if you want to get one of them and support, you know, the Turkish, uh, Turkish variant and kind of publishing industry, go give him a, a hit at his, uh, eBay. So it should be and, listing by the time we're live. Yeah. And, and, and this is my question. Could the Turkish artist get as hot as Del Otto or some of these other guys, some of these other foreign artists? They I keep don't know. doing some work like this. We'll they, see. Yeah, I mean, they, they could blow up, you know, if they – I mean, who knows? I, I like their work. I think it's awesome. You know, I, for, a, for a while there, Del Otto wasn't known by anyone. No, really. I, I, I like a Turkish, um, you know, store giving his local guys, you know, good covers to work on and – them giving him great art. I mean, they're all working yeah. in, in, in various U.S. publishers between Marvel and some of them. Some of them are in um, IDW and, and Dynamite. So they're all working. And they're yeah. doing some fantastic work for him. So there's so, room to grow with those guys, man. I, I think that's a great book. And one more modern that's, I, I don't know, it blew my mind. <laughs> I'm going to show you the first sale, and then we'll kind of show you where it's landed. But this... Uh, Russian Hulk 181. Uh, I, a real modern book. It just kind of popped up, right? Mm -hmm. it, yep. it printed this year even? Yeah. So I did a little research on this one because um, it's just fascinating book. So this is the Russian Hulk 181. It was printed in 2019, actually. So, so it's, it's a, a little bit older by Kome Ilfot. I have no idea what that means or the translation or whatever. They say that the print run, at least through my research, was limited to 3,000. How true that is, I don't know. 
We might not ever know. They also did a 129 and an AF-15. And I can't say I've seen those, but through my research, that's what I found out. They've, that, that company's done a few hardcover omnibuses. This book is officially licensed by Marvel. Um, and this is a this is a crazy price on a book printed in 2019. This was one of the uh, first market. This was the yeah. first market. So Prices two, have come down, right? So this this was a more recent sale. Yeah. I think more, they've settled in this 70 to 90 range. Yeah. But look at that. Shipping from Russia. Let me tell you, the <laughs> Russians don't know how to ship shit. So, <laughs> you know, I picked up some stuff from Russia, and it's come in a manila envelope, and that's it. Right? So some of these guys that are buying these books from Russians – they might be sadly disappointed when they arrive because they might not be properly packaged. And no. what are you going to do? Send it back to Russia? Probably not. You're going to have to suppress it. So, you know, that sale of the one that was the kind of higher end, I know that that was a sale from our, uh, our close friend. I think it was Steve, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was his He's, book. And he sold a few others, and they've settled a bit. But, man, if you're going to buy it, buy it from one in America if you can. Cause if you can, because the Russians don't ship well at all, at least from my experience. If you're Russian out there and I just offended you, I'm sorry. I just, in my experience, from, for five dollars from shipping, Russia. You're getting very far. Yeah, look at that. $5 shipping. Right There you go. Boom, bada, boom. $5 shipping in the U.S. is, is almost questionable. So. Yeah, I, I'm not going to. I, I I would pray to the comic gods if you if if you pick those books up and you're expecting them to come from Russia in decent condition. Mm. Pray, get down on your knees and pray because I, nothing I've ever got from Russia has ever come packaged well. Zilch, <laughs> zero. And speaking of praying, I think <laughs> you guys should all pray that Matt and I get our stuff together and can put an episode together for next week. We're talking about a set. We may do it, but yeah. We're going to make no promises, but you should pray to the comic gods and hope these yahoos that you watch on the YouTube can get an episode together next week. We're, I think we are. We're going to we're gonna put Soup's 199 on the back burner. We're, we're working on it. The, the, the Superman Flash race, race, we're working on it. We're going to pick... We're gonna pick a little uh, a little set to get us going again. Just to neither kind of neither of us felt uh, COVID, you know, fifteen ready to put on those suits to to demo. So we have yeah. to get ourselves a little more in shape to put the, on the suits. Oh, dude, I'm I'm gaining so much weight, John. I don't know about you, but I, I'm I'm drinking like a freaking fish, dude. I am just yeah. I, I mean, no drinking. For us. Yeah, I, I, if me and spandex, no, you don't want to see it. <laughs> All right. So been a fun show. We look forward to hanging out with you. Leave us some comments of some other books you want to see. If you've got some insight on any of these books we shared this week, please leave a comment. Let us know. I mean, we don't know at all. These are kind of our thoughts and our uh, mm -hmm. thanks to the market. If you haven't, like and subscribe. And as I've said before, we got content every night of the week on the CBSI Tales from the Flipside channel.